When it comes to the world of gaming, we have a competitive scene called esports. Those that actively partake in this event are usually extremely dedicated to their game, and are quite knowledgeable in regards to the inner workings of their preferred medium. The people we think of in esports, such as Daigo or Amato or Benedict, are all quite skilled in Street Fighter, Smash, and Dota 2, certainly far better than your average player. And with esports, we don't dare to question this. Yet with speedrunning, it's a bit of a different story. It's quite common to hear complaints about the medium as being something along the lines of games for cheaters, a form that requires no skill and is fundamentally breaking the way we are supposed to be playing games. But is it valid to claim it removes skill entirely? Well, skill is defined as a learned ability to carry out a task with predetermined results within a given time frame, or at least an amount of energy consumption, or sometimes both. Speedrunning meets the requirement, so the question becomes more or less if speedrunning running is an ability. An ability is quite odd in that it is defined as proficiency in a skill. The two are intertwined. Know what kind of skill you're going for varies based on how the subject is applied, but generally 10,000 hours being put into a skill defines mastery over it. So how does this apply to speedrunning? Well, speedrunning, like it or not, fits all the criteria of a skill. It just goes against the preconceived ideas of how games should be handled. See, it's a speedrunner's job to complete a game within a certain time frame, using very specific plans. This requires an insane amount of trial and error with players trying to find the most optimal route through a game, usually by any means necessary, depending on the type of a given run, such as an any percent run or a hundred percent run. Speedrunners spend years dissecting and rearranging methods of system exploitation to try and make the most optimal series of events to ensure the shortest amount of time come the final timestamp. It's a very community-driven culture where teamwork is required to further explore routes and examine a game. For years, the quickest method through Ocarina of Time clocked in at over an hour, but as new methods were discovered, it's been shaved down to nearly 16 minutes. And these tricks themselves require an extreme amount of proficiency to pull off. If you've ever seen Joe Stone's Ocarina of Time speedrun that beat out Cosmos, he was quite stressed over the possibility of screwing up during the castle escape, due to the amount of precision need to successfully pull it off. If you're ever looking for a fun and exciting challenge, it's worth trying these methods out on your own. While some are easy to get the hang of, putting them together provides quite the challenge. It might look easy to do so many exploits and glitches in a row, but the need to do them perfectly only increases the chance of failure, and the longer the game is, the higher the chance of a misstep is. And runners are used to this, often playing a single title over thousands of times in their efforts to master the game, and their perfect run. So to be proficient at speedrunning, you need extensive knowledge in not just the world and its items, but the working of the game's systems and how they impact the world of that game. This is where naysayers begin to express distaste at this method of play as it's going deeper into the nitty gritty than most would ever dare to venture. Rarely do people ever want to venture outside the comfort of the norm. At most, a self-imposed challenge such as a no-shield run is as far as they'll get. It's at this point in a run that the balance shifts from the user holding so little power to them holding complete control. Speedrunners can manipulate games for desired results in ways we wouldn't often believe, and it's all for the purpose of fulfilling a predetermined outcome thanks to their extensive knowledge of its systems. The same applies to esports in many regards, as professionals are often expected to be well-versed in the workings of their characters, their combos, their matchups, and other player style of play. The core difference being that speedrunners are working around a group of systems and time rather than a player. So after thousands of hours of planning and practice, it's time for execution, and come time for the payoff, you're presented with an extremely relatively small period of play. This can be as short as five minutes or as long as six hours depending on the game and the route the runner is taking. And runners pull it off with what seems like such relative ease, yet they describe this as such a daunting task with multiple issues surrounding it. Of course, trying it out for yourself, you'll find out it's never that easy. Beating Bloodborne without taking a hit is in itself a mind-numbingly difficult idea. Yet people do it anyways. Pouring so much blood, sweat, and tears into the final result is truly something magnificent and wondrous to behold. Speedrunning requires so much trial and error, planning, discussion, and patience that to not call it a skill is a fallacy. It may not be how many of us would prefer games to be handled, but proven by its fanbase and the amount of people who indulge and work towards pushing the medium forward forward, it's here to stay, especially with so many indie developers building their games to support speedrunning. And what the future holds for it is one that remains to be seen.
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, check out some of my other stuff. And while you're at it, check out some of Gamnesia's stuff too. We couldn't do any of it without you, and it's all heavily appreciated. Be sure to tell me what you thought about the video in the comments, and hey, if you liked me, head on over to my channel. Give me a like, share, and comment, and hey, maybe subscribe to me. I'll see you all next time.